Often when we're using git pull, we can get away with an even shorter syntax where we don't need to specify the remote or the branch we want to pull. Because it's really common to be on some branch, right? I'm on uh, the food branch. And if I want the latest from origin food, that's where I would want to get changes from. Normally I'm not going to pull some other branch onto the food branch. I want the latest from food on GitHub. So I could do git pull origin food. I'm on the food branch. I want food changes coming from origin. Uh, we only have one remote right now, so it should be origin anyway, right? We haven't configured another remote. But origin is just such a common name in Git. Uh, again, you can change all of these, but it's so common that it will default. Git pull will default to origin if you don't specify a remote. And the branch will automatically default to whatever tracking connection is configured for your current branch. And as in every example we've done so far, uh, the tracking connections are set up for us. We never specify a tracking connection. I didn't create them simply by switching to a remote branch. If you recall, if I go way back here, when we did a git switch, almost there, almost there. Okay, when we did this, right, git switch puppies or git switch food or git switch movies, that branch was set up for us and it automatically had a tracking reference to the remote branch. So typically these are just the same name. Puppies, origin puppies. Food, origin food. Main, origin main. You absolutely can configure them differently. I could have my food branch, my local food branch, uh, for whatever reason, uh, track the movies branch on origin. You just normally wouldn't want that. <laughs> you normally don't do that. Uh, so git pull depends on the context of where you are. If I'm on the master branch and I run git pull, git will automatically default to origin as the remote and master because I'm on the master branch and currently the tracking branch, the default value is origin master. So same thing with puppies. If I'm on the puppies branch and I run git pull, it's just a way of saying, please get the latest changes and pull them down, merge them into this branch from the remote version, from the origin version of puppies. So it's really common to do this because that's normally where you want to pull changes from, right? If I'm on the food branch, I want origin food. So let's do it. Uh, I updated the food branch in between videos just to make it faster. I didn't want you to have to watch. I added a T file. All right, I don't have that locally. Uh, I'll just prove it, right? We don't see T. We have coffee, but no T. If I do git pull, it pulled the food branch from origin. I see the T file right there. I can view it. If I do git log, I have that new commit. Uh, one more example. I updated the fantasy branch. I added a new file, Griffin. There it is. I don't have that. If I switch to fantasy, git switch fantasy. Okay, I don't have that new Griffin file. You can see over here, it doesn't show up. I could do git pull origin fantasy or just rely on the default git pull. And now I have it. It shows up there and here it is. So if you want, you can use that syntax of you know typing out origin and typing the branch name. Sometimes you need to use that syntax. For example, if you have multiple remotes, which we will, we'll have an upstream and an origin. So sometimes we don't want to default to that origin. But for now, uh, really, it, most of the time, you can just use git pull, assuming you want to update the puppies branch with the changes from origin puppies or the movies branch with the changes from origin movies. All right, so that about wraps up fetching and pulling. Hopefully this diagram makes more sense now. When we fetch, we're getting changes from a remote repo, but they're not integrated into our workspace. When we pull, we get those changes from the remote repo, and then they are merged into our current head branch where we pull from matters. And that brings me to the last slide. Fetch gets changes from a remote branch or branches, updates the remote tracking branches with the changes, does not merge anything into your current head branch, and it's safe to do it anytime. It's not gonna screw up any work that you're doing. Git pull, on the other hand, also gets changes from remote branches, but it updates the current branch with the new changes merging them in and it can result in merge conflicts it is not safe to do at any time meaning that uh, you know you can have conflicts you can have changes integrated into your working directory 
conflicting with work that you had been working on. So not recommended to do if you have uncommitted work. All right, so that's fetch and pull.